And now we're going to try and bleed the air out of the system, starting with this big banjo bolt here. First, however, we need to get to it. So I seem to remember that this assembly just pops off. Move the sensor here. Possibly. Maybe. Move the plug from it. There we go. In a working room. Now we'll uh, break it loose before we try to use the engine running. I believe it's 17 mil, and it is. Let's oh, that is tight. There we go. Snug it back up. I'm going to put some paper towel underneath it to catch whatever leaks out. Trying to keep it away from the belt assembly. Alright, let's give it a whirl. As you saw that lovely spray there, we have fluid. Having now cleaned up the oil that's sprayed everywhere, we can pop the uh, intake funnel back on along with the IAT sensor, which is the intake air temperature sensor. Right, we'll just wiggle this back in. that back in possibly there we go on to step two so as you can see we now have the car up on jack stands so that I can take you underneath the back here and show you where the bleeder is for the ASR which is, I believe stands for anti-slip regulation, which in this case controls the lockup of the rear differential. So what you're looking at here is on the passenger side of the differential, just above the rear half shaft. You can see this little shiny piece here. Mine had a rubber cap over it, and this is the bleeder. So what I'm gonna do here just put a hose on it down into a can so I don't make a huge mess all over my driveway. Start the car and crack this nut loose. I believe it's an 11 millimeter, but I could be wrong. And then as soon as I stop getting air out of this end of the system, I'll close it up and we'll move on to bleeding the transfer case. However, before you bleed the ASR in the rear, you need to remove the connector from the formatic computer, which normally sits right here behind the battery. And on here, you need to find pins two, four, six, and eight. I'll turn the top row here. Pin three is the blank one, and the two blanks sit below pins one and two. So you, to bleed the ASR, you jump pins two and eight with a piece of wire, go and bleed the rear end, close it, come and fill up your reservoir again to replenish any lost fluid, 
and then you momentarily jump two, four, and six all together. Up to, manual says 20 times. I had to do it about 30 times. And that will bleed out the transfer case solenoids. Then you can hook it back up, start the car, and hopefully your formatic light will go out. Be sure when you retest it that you have your formatic selector in function, not test position. Earlier cars have a lever somewhere in the same area here, just switch between function and test mode. Okay, so this is try number three, I believe. The first two times I jumpered terminals two, four, and six to bleed the transfer case, I came back to a randomly blinking formatic light, which is better than the solid on that it was before. I've jumpered it about 30 more times now in hopes that I won't have to crawl under and manually bleed the torque, sorry, the transfer case feed line. However, odds are I probably will. So let's give it a try. Yep, still blinking. Oh well. I guess we'll have to crawl underneath and bleed the line. Still better than it was though. So here we are under the transfer case. And you can see there are two bleeders. This one here and this one here. This one is for bench bleeding the transfer case after rebuilds only. It's not one that we bleed uh, during a fluid change or when we're trying to bleed air out of the system. This one here, which normally has a rubber cap on it that I've removed in this instance so you can see it, is the one that bleeds the hydraulic lines going to the transfer case. This is the one that we bleed to remove air from the system. So what I did is I put a hose on it that went down into a bucket, uh, started the car, and then with the system turned to function, as well as the formatic control module installed, you'll crack this open and you'll retrieve a strong stream of fluid. Uh, I recommend wearing a face shield when you do this because my bleeder hose popped off from the pressure and sprayed everything everywhere. Uh, so safety is key in this instance. You can see that both of these are located right next to the formatic drain plug. So that's how you bleed the transfer case lines. So now with the transfer case bled, Let's see if our formatic light will go out. So there you go, no formatic light. That's how you bleed all the air out of your formatic system.